Hey there, fellow minions of technology. My name is Tim Lee, and welcome to Legacy Studio. In today's video, I want to look at this guy. It's called the Wee Light. <laughs> I'm sorry, W E E. Uh, Y-L-I-T-E. Now, you may have noticed that my backdrop here is all turned off. I got things kind of dark in the room here because I want to mess with this wee light. And the basic premise is it's the size of your cell phone, for Pete's sake. It's really, really tiny. And I put it in my back pocket earlier, and I walked around with it today, and it feels like a cell phone. It's super heavy in a good way. It's all metal construction. The only thing I wonder about is if that screen on the front will fall off at any point in time because it looks like it's held on with glue. Other than that, that's really the, the I mean, that that's the light. That's all there is to it. It's got two areas where you can bolt into your camera here or here or set up bolts wherever you want. I mean, I could put this on anything, anything that I would use my camera on, tripod stand, whatever, came with a charging cable, which is just a micro USB. Also came with this little guy, which you can screw in, and basically what you do is you screw it in to uh, however deep you want to go on that, and then you tighten it down to the light like that, and then you grab your camera, which I got a camera that I was shooting with a little earlier this week. You slide this onto there, and tighten it down like this. And that's all there is to it. I mean, it's as simple as that. And you can tighten this down, and there you go. You got a light mounted to the top of this thing. So the question we have to ask is, first off, how much is it? Well, it's uh, it's between 60 and 70 bucks, I think. Why is it so expensive for being so small? I asked myself the same question, and I admittedly, I admittedly gave it a shot anyway. I thought it was worth a good review, so we'll give it a shot anyway. When I saw all metal construction, I went, oh, this is interesting. So... Not only that, I got it in the mail, I opened it up, the box un unboxing was nice, it's in a nice box. But what really threw me, which really impressed me honestly, was when I turned it on. Because take a look at this, let's see here if my camera will get in focus. Take a look at the screen here as we turn this on. You see that turn on there, and there you go. That is a really cool screen, and it shows you all the settings that you're working with and, and messing with. And you can kind of see right now it's doing something where it's jumping from like a green to a blue effect, and you can kind of see that on my hand. It's doing a scene. I don't really know how these scenes work, but you can scroll through these scenes and see what each one does. I mean, one honestly looks like a fire of some sort, uh, and, and so each one has a different scene. I don't see much of a need for this part of it, whatever the scene thing is, but let's get to the really good stuff that impressed me about this. First off, this is only at 10%, and that's a, that's a decent amount of light. Um, I showed this to one of my guys at my work earlier today, and I literally could not look at it at 100%. As I showed it to him, showed it to myself, flashed him with it a couple times, we were both just blinded by this. So I'm very excited to put it up to 100% for you here in a little bit. So on the back side here, we have a couple different options. Uh, once again, we're going to try and get it into focus here as much as we can. So you have the mode button right below the power button. Right next to that is the set button, the positive, and the minus. And each one of these will control... Uh, there are eight different modes on this. You have your uh, your light option, basically. Actually, let me read the official one. So this is your light option. Mode two is your color temperature. Uh, let's see here. Mode There we go. Mode three is your RGB color light, and you can go through it in what looks like degrees of light, which is pretty cool. Uh, mode four is what they call RGB self-matching color, but what it really is is it literally gives you the option to to choose what you want for each percentage in RGB. I mean, literally, this is the same kind of thing you use on, like, Adobe, you know? And, and like, if you're doing Adobe with RGB, there's a percentage of red, green, and blue that you use. You could literally kind of, like, tune this in to that, which is really, really cool. I'm not really sure of how you would use it, but the fact that it's there is pretty darn impressive, in my opinion. Next up on the list, if we hit mode again, uh, that sends us into mode 5. This is our... <laughs> This is a little gimmicky. This is the streamer's light. So apparently if you're a streamer, you have to have some kind of randomizing color going on in the background. And there may be some settings here for it. Yes. So you can scroll through these settings here. Here's B, and it's like on a transition of some sort. Looks like it's going a little bit slower. There's C. So there's three different options for this, and it looks like it's just doing it at different speeds or something like that. It's a bit more gimmicky. 
Let's head to mode six, which is your thunder flash. So if you are a, a filmmaker and you want to make it look like there's thunder in the background or whatever, you can literally set it to do these different thunder lightning flashes uh, to give it like a nifty effect on some of your lighting, which is kind of cool. They have three different settings in A, B, and C for that as well. And then you hit mode again on mode seven. <laughs> This is your, obviously, your warning light. <laughs> uh, if you see this kind of light, it's probably a bit too late. Now, in my camera, it looks a little bit more orange than it does red, uh, but that is orange, uh, red and blue when I look over here more so. And there's it looks like there's a couple different options, A, B, and C once again. Sorry, it looks like we're a bit out of focus, but you can see that those, are, those LEDs are going like crazy there and definitely looking like I am in quite a bit of trouble right now. Uh, if we go ahead and hit it again, we're on mode 8, and we're going back to the scene selections, which I'm not really sure of how the scene selections work, but each one of these has features within features, which is still pretty impressive. It gives you a pretty wide selection of how you want to do these things. Now, let's go to the part where this is important to you and I, okay? First and foremost, this is charged by just a USB cable at 5 volts, 2 amps, okay? No big deal there. It's, you could you could charge this off of your cell phone uh, chargers. You can charge this off of your computers. Whatever the case may be, there's tons of options there. By the way, we're at 3200 Kelvin right now. And, and Kelvins come into question whether it's a true Kelvin or not. Needless to say, right now it says 3200 Kelvin, um, and hopefully it's correct. But what I will show you here in a second is we'll go through the different Kelvin levels, and you'll see about how deep into the tungsten it goes and how crazy bright it goes into the daylight, which gets me excited because I'm going to show you that here in a second. But we can go through the settings here, and we can go through se selections. So this is 4,000 Kelvin. This is if you're using uh, uh, lights from your ceiling, you know, if you're in an office situation. Here's another one. This is daylight 5,200 Kelvin. Here's the next one. This looks like flash at 5,500 Kelvin. Uh, next one is uh, in cloudy conditions. This is 6,000 Kelvin. Uh, and if you're in shadow, 7,000 Kelvin. And at this point in time, that's turning into a really nice blue... Uh, looks really, really good. Now, RGB is not known to be absolutely correct on Kelvin levels, but you got to admit right now, this still looks pretty even roughly with my lights that I have set up around me right now. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed with it so far. And then we jump back to 32 Kelvin, which they consider tungsten. Nice thing is it goes even deeper than that. If we hit mode again, now we can choose the exact amount of Kelvin that we want to do by simply hitting the set button. Let me get it in here so you can see it again. Come on, get close to the camera for me, please. There we go. And what you can do is you can select your mode. Ah, sorry, I'm wrong mode. There we go. Come on, go back. There we go. So you can select your mode, hit set again, <laughs> and then you can go up here. And we can go, let's go down all the way as low as we can to 2500 Kelvin. So this is 2500 Kelvin. It's a very orange red dark um, dark tone, which I actually really like because I really want to give it that effect. Like if you're in somewhere dark and you're using a torch or something, or you're working in a room that's full of tungsten light. Usually I use these as practical lights more than I use them as uh, uh, effect lights. So usually I'm trying to match colors within a room. And if you do anything that has to do with conferences uh, or things like that, there's oftentimes areas where there's more tungsten in a room than there is daylight or vice versa. Having this is pretty handy. Having it this small is even better. And we haven't even gotten to how bright it gets yet. All right, let's go ahead and turn this up here and see about how far we go the other way. So turning it up, turning it up, turning it up, turning it up. We're in 6,000 Kelvin, 7,000 Kelvin, 8,500 Kelvin. We are now in, it literally has a blue tint to it. And it is very, very blue. But it's, once again, I would rather have the potential of going above and beyond what the room I'm in is doing. I want to be over control, not under control. I want to be too in too much control, not enough control, if that makes sense. So this is exciting to me. And then finally, let's go ahead and test the brightness. Now, I'm going to just go ahead and hold it up to you. My camera is set on all manual settings. It shouldn't change. And let's just see how bright this gets. So I'm just going to keep it 8,500 Kelvin. And this is 10%, 11, here we go, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. That is 100 percent. When I showed this to my friend um, at work today, I literally 
I had a very difficult time looking directly at the LEDs. And every time I was like, hey, check this out. And I pointed it at him. It was so bright. He got mad at me because it was just so absolutely vibrant. I mean, this is a very bright light. Um, I'm truly... Oh, dear. I mean, I have tons of lights in this room. But the amount of light that this thing is putting out at this moment in time is truly really really bright i mean if you're not looking directly at it i'm fine i can see it out of the corner of my eye pretty boldly but i mean this is pretty cool i just can't look directly at it um let's see how it looks on the other end of things now here's as we've been messing with this okay i'm gonna have to do this to prove my point i'm gonna try and block as much of it with my hand as i can um i'm gonna try and show you without blinding myself here look at the battery power uh, once it comes into focus, hopefully it will. Uh, it right now only shows three out of four, and I did just charge this. This only has a 3,000 milliamp battery inside of it. My hand is literally getting a little warm from this. But you can kind of see there, there's three out of four cells. Now, if I turn that percentage back down, that will climb again. So it kind of lets you know what your battery is going to be in the near future. I can literally feel the heat on my hand as I'm doing this, though. So let me go ahead and... <laughs> I don't want to blind myself. Um, the whole outside of it right now is pretty cool. Um, the front is even cool, but as it was sitting on my hand, it was getting warmer. Let's go back to settings here and drop this down to 2400, and let's see what it looks like when we go to the other side of the temperature scale at 100% as well, and see if it changes that, that brightness. I should keep pointing it at the camera. All right, we are at 2500 Kelvin at the lowest level. Let's see if I can even look at it. Actually, that's not as bad this time. The more I turn it towards me, the brighter it gets as it points at me. So it seems like maybe at the maybe at the lower level, it's not as vibrant, but I'm still okay with that. Because nine times out of ten, we're probably going to use the daylight side of things a bit more. And truth be told, I got this because I wanted the RGB capabilities. You guys know that I already have a ton of lights because you've seen my other reviews on lights. I have a ton of lights. But I wanted something that was more of an accent light. Um, I saw a video with Andrew, Hu Andrew Huang where he literally did his whole room in like a purple light. And I'm going, oh, I want to do that. Well, I, I need more light than this to do that. But as an accent light... I mean, this could probably do some pretty cool stuff. So let's try it out here. If we want to set it into a certain tone, let's go to the mode three. Nah, it's a little bright, sorry. So if we go into mode three here, and once again, I'm probably not going to be able to get it into focus. In mode three there, that you can mess with it in degrees. And I'm not really sure what the bottom one on that is. We're going to have to mess with that too. So let's go ahead now and say set. So here we go. Let's go ahead and change the degrees until it turns purple. Which right now it looks like we're in more of a blue. Let's see if we keep going here. I do find that sometimes it takes a little while for it to load up and and like go through the numbers. And I don't like that it's a little slower, but a small price to pay. So this is more of a magenta kind of tone. And then I'm going to go down to the bottom here and I want to see what this does. So right now it's set on 90... 100 L. And I'm looking actually in a screen down here so I can actually see each individual LED without blinding myself. Let's go ahead and turn this down and see if anything happens. Something is happening. Oh. That's weird. It's like a saturation, maybe? So we are now at 0L. I can't really tell if that's a saturation or what that did. Okay, so according to the manual here, L for some reason stands for saturation. So yes, you can remove or add saturation to whatever I was doing there with that. Now, this is really, really cool though. I mean, this light is very powerful uh, for its size. And I need to test out its battery life right now. Even though, even that at 100% in this RGB level, that has climbed back up to a hundred percent which i don't know if it's in focus there we go that's climbed back up to a hundred percent battery so it seems like under certain loads it's going to show a different battery power and certainly i can maybe see why so let me go ahead and bring that saturation back up to a hundred why it says l i'm not sure i would rather put s there or sat something that explains that but in any case this is really cool just 
I mean, this is a great light. I mean, for, for how small it is, it's a great light. And I can set it off to the side at 100%, and I can get that nice little change in hue every now and then. So maybe if I'm working on a, a video that has a, a theme that might be something a little different, I can use my RGB light to make that change. And not, not only that, the thing I love is that I can mount it on top of a camera, which is super great in low lighting situations. Uh, and, I mean, this just makes it a little bit more fun to make videos because... I can mess with it. I mean, is it still at 100%? It is at 100%. I can look at it a bit easier at this 100% right now. Um, I can look at it much easier. But when it was in the other mode, let me go ahead. Now, I got to admit, everything is weird now that I'm looking away. Uh, but here in this, uh, yeah, no, I can't look at that. <laughs> That's too bright. That is too bright at 3200 Kelvin at 100%. So apparently this is a little bit brighter than the RGB levels themselves. It's definitely bright. So anyway, uh, that is my review of this. So far in my first tests of this, it's nice and bright. I'm pretty impressed with it. Um, I'm excited to use it. And the next test I need to do is to see how long its battery life lasts. Uh, I got to make another video right after this. So I may as well use this as a light uh, in, in that next video uh, so I can uh, see if it'll last for a while. Oh, good heavens. Um, yeah, in this mode, it's only showing 75%, so this thing is cool, though. I'm going to put a link in the description below to this light, and uh, you can go check it out for yourself. Uh, if you're looking for something small and compact, kind of like the um, uh, aperture lights, uh, this thing is pretty awesome for what, for what it is. I mean, it's so small, but plenty bright enough for me to do a lot of stuff with it that I can't usually do. And I have a couple other small lights that I use. I have a couple little ones set up here in the corners of my room and stuff that are setting the shoulder lighting off here on me and stuff. But I really do like the RGB quality of this. And on top of that, still have the ability to literally hold it in my hand. I mean, it feels like a cell phone. And the weight of it is so nice and heavy, it makes it feel super sturdy. So I'm really impressed by this. More tests to come. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Um, I don't have much else to say about this right now, except that I need to test out how long the battery lasts. It's not waterproof, but at the same time, it is definitely very sturdily built. So with a bit of work, it could probably be some form of waterproof, but don't quote me on that. And other than that, I'm impressed. I'm very pleased. I want something that can go somewhere with me that I can do stuff with and... This is a pretty nifty... Wait a minute. Oh. Oh. Okay. Hang on. I'm hoping I'm supposed to take this off. I'm an idiot. <laughs> it looks so much cleaner now. I forgot to take the plastic. Technically, I should have left the plastic on because it was slightly diffused, and I personally like more diffused light. But it, all my concerns of that down there is gone, and I, but I'm going to have to turn it on blind myself again because, I mean, I mean. <laughs> thank you for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe, uh, comment, and uh, just thank you so much for joining my channel. And checking out everything that I'm up to. Oh my gosh, I forgot to take off the plastic. Isn't that what like every YouTuber does in the first unboxing video? Oh well. I'm going to mess with this, use it in a couple of my videos, set it in some ways to get some cool lighting uh, around the room. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm impressed by it. So this is really sweet and I just love that it's so small. It'll fit in my bag. Honestly, I could use two or three more of these. So anyway, link is in the comment. Uh, link is in the description below if you want to check it out. I'm embarrassed that I forgot to take the plastic off. I probably should have left it on because I really like things to stay nice and clean. And this is certainly pretty sweet. Yeah, that'll do it for this video. God bless you guys. I'll see you next time. Oh my gosh, Tim, you are a terrible reviewer.